from all over the country and also from abroad were invited and they have given their very precious deliberations and i think it must be of great use for all the researchers so <clears throat> this is the veridicity session veridicity session generally it is for a session in which all the persons are invited for a, to give their blessings to the participants and it is needless to say that who deserves to give this blessings you all know that elderly people they come and their blessings are of great use along with their blessings they have a very long experience academic as well as practical life only academic life is incomplete unless it is blended with the practical experiences because all this academic experiences academic knowledge this is basically for our real life so such academicians who have very long been in this field of education and they are still very active in this academic world plus they have the bonus of the practical experiences which are the which give a very precious guideline for the young researchers our dignitaries i have to introduce the eminent dignitaries who are in this session for today the session is being presided over by dr yashwan singh sir ex principal can i ps yes although he is retired but still he is very much ac academically active and not only this i am proud to say that he has been our mentor and whatsoever in chennai the system is there academic activities are there it is he has a very fair share in bringing chennai to this position so we yeah. have honored to be with him for this predictive session our guest of honor he is a very very reputed person not only of india fame but he is an internationally recognized body person he has been he, 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 it is the government of india <clears throat> who has acknowledged his contribution to this academic world that's why he is he has been awarded with padma shri award so this is our guest of honor is padma shri professor rc sobhti who has been along with being an academician he has been the vice chancellor of punjab university and bba university lucknow our special guest is professor sk malhotra sir ex head geology department allahabad university allahabad he has de delivered a very uh, intelligent and very thought provoking lecture which compelled us that we should seek his blessings on our valedictory session our chief guest is our elder brother professor ram lakhan singh sir a very renowned scholar researcher in the field of biochemistry we have the honor of being with him in this ramlor loya award university at present he is the honorable vice chancellor of ilambar pitambar university jharkhand so all these dignitaries and along with our participants sir kamla nehru institute is very indebted to you people that you have spared time for our this one week program of workshop you we all very cordially welcome you in this program sir i would like to tell you that this program as you as i have already told you that it was started on 15th and for for seven days it it went on in these seven days it it was not a formality three distinguished personalities 
who have been known all over the world or or the country they were invited for the talks so three lectures per day was given by them and the second part of this section was of this session was being given to the participants it was it is not so that we are formally uh, doing this uh, lecture and uh, whether it has reached to our participants or not so in order to make it genuine and it should go to the ground level some homework type some assignments we have given to our participants and their activities are monitored they are evaluated in the evening and marks are being given we also have this system that they will the best five participants will be awarded as the best participants of this workshop so when we designed this program we intended that as per our reputation of this kamla nehru institute this workshop should go on so we tried to we we never compared ourselves what is happening in the colleges our intention was to follow the best the excellent first we took the model from them and then we have some innovations of our own selves and we have we, we our attempt has been how to excel and how to be the best and i hope my participants will not be disagree with it, this fact best efforts have been done on our part and definitely it would have been uh, very fruitful for our participants uh, our program is today's program is that uh, professor dobati sir आरसी सोपती सर पदमसी प्रोफेसर आरसी सोपती सर सिंस द लास्ट टाइम आवर शेड्यूल वाज सो रिस्ट्रिक्टेड दैट वी कुड नॉट हियर हिम एंड ही सेड दैट एट लीस्ट वन लेक्चर फुल लेक्चर आई ही नीड्स सो द फर्स्ट स्पीकर टुडे इज प्रोफेसर आरसी सोपती हु इज द गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर एंड आई हैव एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी इंफॉर्म यू he is a very scholarly person he has the academic as well as administrative experiences his experiences are uh, very fruitful and they are we should take some uh, help from them we should be guided by them and how to improve our research as we know that research and development <clears throat> these two things are synonymous with each other research it is done only for the development a country which has the best of the research it is known as the developed country as you know that uh, nowadays the problem is with the corona that has it has created india is at par with the world countries of uh, in this field of research if russia oxford university or us if they are claiming that they are in the stage of preparing vaccine vaccine in the last stage in, in seven centers in india also we are competing with them to to create this vaccine and it is also in the final stage of testing human testing has started in india also so it is due to the researches that india has carved a very powerful position in the world community so this research activity is deeply associated with development so for the guidance for to enrich our knowledge we have professor rc sobhti sir to share his experiences with us i am inviting with due respect to professor to padam sri rc sobhti sir sir thank you very much in fact uh... Doctor Malhotra told me to talk about Corona uh, instead of uh, the words you talk about. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll start with my. I'm thankful to Honorable Vice Chancellor 
to be over here, and the ex-principal, Dr. Malhotra, Dr. Shwan Singh, other colleagues who are over here, and the participants. I know that you must have learned a lot in the one week workshop, which was multidisciplinary. And it was, as I just told the first day, it was needed. Okay, today, education, though has expanded, but at the same time, it has shrunken into a common uh, uh, sea, I will say, that uh, as the rivers merge in the sea, same way, the total education is a sea now. We cannot separate Ganga, Jamna over here or this subject, this one. Now I'll come back to the, my uh, topic as such. Uh, please, uh, your disability screen sharing, eh? please. Please help me in getting the screen sharing. Yes, yes, I'm getting, giving you, sir. Uh, given, sir, you can share. Just one minute. Or it's take a little time. Problem has come just one minute. You see now? Hello? Sir, we can is, see. Are, yes, are sir, you, can, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Quite a bit now. Just to uh, introspect where we are and what should be done. And uh, you have already talked about the vaccine. Let me say this is a novel coronavirus SARS COVID 2, a pandemic outbreak 19, was reported in Kerala student who had just uh, returned from Wuhan, China on 30th January, uh, 2020. Uh, as I told you, it has, uh, outbreak was from Wuhan, China. The seafood market in Wuhan, China, where the outbreak started sell seafood, chicken, bats, civet cats, and other wild game animals. 55% of the COVID-19 patients had a history of exposure to seafood market of one city. Now SARS-CoV-2 is a zoonotic virus and bats are the reservoir holes of SARS-CoV-2 and pangolin is considered, might be the intermediate host of this very virus. However, uh, we are not sure and much more studies required about this one, but there is a, some feeling also, it might not be a zoonotic, it might have been synthesized uh, by China or some way. Yeah. Uh, coronavirus uh, theory are the largest group of positive sense single standard RNA viruses. Uh, human coronavirus were first identified 
since the mid 1960s and 65, and they were named as the B814 by Tyrell and Bailey. But later on, this strain was lost in the laboratory. As a result, we cannot compare with upcoming identification strains. At present, seven human coronaviruses have been identified. These are 229E, OC43, and like that one. And these are all HCVs belong to the subfamily coronaviridae. This is the, what is a schematic representation of coronavirus. I'm not going to detail that uh, how it is done there. But main historical flow of coronaviruses in what concerns the 21st century epidemics, in 2012, there was a Middle East respiratory syndrome related coronavirus, which was named as MERSCOV. COV. And now in 2003, we had a severe uh, acute respiratory syndrome related coronavirus, what was a SARS COV, and uh, which was uh, named as SARS as such. And 2019, was SARS COV2, which caused the coronavirus disease. We can't call it severe acute respiratory syndrome which earlier used to call. Now, because it's a very uh, mixed type of syndrome, so it's a name now as a coronavirus disease 2019. Now, different coronavirus during different outbreaks, different parts of the world, that is uh, SARS-CoV uh, in 2003, severe bats and uh, first from China, it is severe uh, respiratory syndrome, and COV human coronavirus, HK1, a new heaven virus, it was seen from mice, Hong Kong, China, and uh, coronavirus respiratory syndrome. And COVMS, Middle East respiratory syndrome related coronavirus, 2012. It was, came from camels and bats, Jeddah, so, uh, Saudi Arabia, and they called the MERS disease. And SARS CoV 2, which we are now having with us, which is called a corona disease, uh, of course, the name severe acute respiratory syndrome which was started, now we call it corona disease. Uh, 2019, origin is considered to be bats uh, and uh, place is the Wuhan, China. You see that uh, at least from the four uh, of these three are from China and probably that's what the wildlife uh, source is. Now, this is the variant structure because when we talk about the uh, drug therapy or uh, the vaccine preparation, we are supposed to know the whole structure that is the out of these spikes, they are responsible for most of the function for attacking the human cells. And then we have a enveloped protein, then we have a nucleic aspect protein, uh, which include the RNA and uh, the lipid membrane, which covers this one RNA. This is what diagrammatic picture of the uh, genomic structure of the CoV2. And uh, the major feature of the viral structure proteins, as I told, spike, which was a large one on the outside, is the S protein. It has two subunits, S1 and S2, because both of these units have their own function. A 150 KDA class 1 fusion protein modified by end linked glycosylation. S1 binding to the host cell receptors, what we call the AC receptors, and S2 fusion of viral and cellular membrane. First, the virus is uh, accepted with the receptors. The spike protein binds to the receptor, and then the, through the S2, it binds to the cellular membrane. Then there's a membrane protein uh, to which the spike binds, 25-30 KDA integral type, three membrane protein, necessary from membrane curvature, assembly of coronavirus particle, and even budding, there's a new viral formation. Then there's envelope E protein, 8 to 12 KDA form, ion, ch ion channels by assembling the membrane necessary for electrochemical balance in subcellular compartments. And then uh, finally, we have a nucleic aspirin protein, 349% amino acid. It uh, plays a role in the replication and transcription. Now, SARS CoV 2, as I already told, is a positive sense, uh, the uh, single stranded RNA. Beta coronavirus 30 kb genome size, a viral protein up to 14 open leading frames, a five prime end, a single ORF encode, a polyprotein that uh, autoproteotically cleaves 16 nm uh, structure protein, uh, forms replicas 
transcriptase complex. The 16 protein replication transcript consists of multiple enzymes, enzyme for genome replication, viral RNA dependent RNA polymerase, and other enzymes such as endonucleases, essential for the nucleic acid metabolism. And the 13 operating frames from 3 prime N, including structure protein, spike, envelope, membrane, and nucleic acid. Now, this is what uh, it looks like. Let's say over F1, over F1B, and then there's a, a three prime cell. As I will told you, that this is how different proteins or different things are formed from this very genome and not the genomic organization. It's a very complex. Uh, it produces the PDP for other protein, and then uh, so another protein like that, different proteins are formed, and the molecular structure has already been determined of this very uh, virus. And that's how people are moving towards the uh, having the vaccine on different parts. Some are doing the membrane, some are doing the, uh, the this one, the mRNA, like that one, things are frequent. Now, these are the functional proteolytic cleavage sites of 16 non-structural proteins in ORF1 and be predictable. And these have been by, by, by bioinformatics, at different uh, sites have identified that, well, as I told you, map uh, that uh, map shows that how different portions can be cleaved from each other. And these are the cleavage sites. And this is how uh, SARS CoV 1, SARS CoV 2 spike protein, also uses the ACE2 receptor. And that is a very important one. And that's how this is the S2, uh, this S1 of the, this one protein, and this is the ACE receptor. This is how this binds over here, and then the whole thing starts, because this is a viral structure with uh, this one spike protein, and this is the uh, cell, our cell cell, AC2 receptor, and they bind over here. The spike protein has uh, the 150 KD, 300, uh, 3,823, one, one Amino acids are there, and uh, and and this is the uh, the SARS CoV RBD bound to the N terminal uh, peptide domain of AC2. That's how the binding can take place over there with the AC2 receptor. This molecule work has been done, and uh, the very interesting part is there's an unexpected fluorine cleavage site between S1 and S2 and between the boundary of the SARS-CoV-2, which is cleaved during biosynthesis. A novel feature which is separate from, which uh, separates the uh, so, uh, this uh, so, uh, COVID-19 from the earlier COVID-1 over the SARS-1. That's now anything what, well, what we found with the SARS-1 is not working in the COVID-19. And this is how, spike protein conformation is there. And this is a closed conformation when it is not attacking the cell. But when it is to come to the bind to the cell, it will open over here and this binding will take place. And then it uh, will allow the virus to enter the cell by binding to the membrane and through the channels. Because the, normally it's closed when it opens for a binding. And this is how transmission takes place, as I will told you that this is SARS-CoV-2 diagrammatically, phylogenetically for similar, genomically quite similar to the SARS, like a bat COV. And by its primary host is a bat, consumed as a food by a human being. And then when a human being comes, it a direct contact a human host. And then there's a human to human uh, transmission. We don't need bats now for this one, but there may be some uh, intermediate host in the beginning, which we do not know, uh, people talk about a pangolin, but we, we are not sure about that one. And this is how the transmission all over the world. The stage one cases mostly imported from infected countries. As I told you that uh, we had a boy uh, in Kerala coming from China, Wuhan, and we detected in 30th January, December 2019. <clears throat> and from there, Local transmission from positive individual took place uh, by the oil, the droplets. And uh, this is how 
spread and this then can the stage three uh, in the sense of the community spreading not easy to detect the source of infection now because in this stage two we could find that uh, in whose contact it, it came but in stage three it becomes quite difficult to find out that uh, from which individual has got it of course people are trying to find out the 64 relation and all those things are taking place but finally what is happening now probably uh, there's a lot lot of discussion we are already in the community spreading and we are not able to find from where the uh, person is getting infected at the moment and uh, because uh, uh, earlier we used to say well, they, these were the contacts but now we are not able to say that one and we hear about the entry stage four as it is there in us uh, russia and brazil situation we are almost in the same situation now coming to replication uh, pathophysiology is SARS-CoV-2 and this is how the uh, when the virus enter uh, this is this is a binding of the uh, spike protein with the uh, AC2 and then uh, there's a uh, endocytosis and of course there's a complex mechanism I'm not going to talk about that one and any if we can block any of these stage then probably the treatment can be there now this is how our difference in SARS-CoV-2 entry where host cell proteases may activate SARS-2-CoV-2 uh, the spikes and uh, now what happens basically we are talking about a strong immune system because the SARS-CoV-2 when it comes to the, uh, the one uh, by, by sneezing or uh, by respiration it uh, is taken by the people and goes to the uh, lungs uh, through, of course, nose. And then the whole immune system get activated. There is a alveolar epithelium type two, other cells, monocyte macrophages, TH1, T17, and the pro cytokines. It's a complex system which works. Of course, uh, B cells and T cells have to play a major role in that one. And uh, major viral host infection is a delayed or suppressed type of interferon response during initial infection. That is why infection suppress because the uh, response is delayed. And uh, then viral replication triggers hyperinflammatory condition. This said, uh, as the number of viruses increase, the inflammatory conditions increase and a person feels uncomfortable because the alveoli have so become so disturbed and they, they cannot take oxygen as such. So there's an influx of activated neutrophils, inflammatory monocytes, macrophages, and that's how the alveoli get disturbed. So Th1, Th17, uh, Th1 and Th7 induced specific antibodies are produced, but they are not produced immediately. There is a delay. That is how the alveoli gets uh, attacked very fast. This is how, in the early stage, how the alveoli look like over here, and they are the general macrophages, activated T cell, very simple. But as the virus multiplies, now what are neutrophils and K, then the lot many, uh, this uh, hyaline membrane is formed in the, the activation of HS2 inhibitor, HS2 And this is how uh, the COVID-19 progression, immune boosting, uh, interferon NA or antisera, non-sphere immune protection, uh, big, that's it. Uh, external immune section, then vitamin D, and the severe inflammatory, ultra inflammatory damage is there. The multifunctional role of interferon in the pet SARS 2. Interferons are playing a major role for this one because when we are talking about angiotensin 2, uh, which are the main receptors of the virus, and that they are responsible for causing, uh, because the angio angiotensin 2 protects them, but uh, when it is uh, covered, uh, the acute lung injury occurs, and uh, this is a complex system which works over here. This is a uh, from a magazine. How do things happen over here? This is normal alveoli, the normal alveoli, and this is seed. And then when uh, this is no healthy one, then this is an infected one. When virus goes inside, and then it's a moderate infection uh, wherein the alveoli gets uh, uh, has uh, so many things inside neutrophils and other things, and they do not allow 
that the much of the oxygen had to be taken in because space has been already occupied. And then uh, in the sphere case, most of the alveoli get damaged and that's how the person uh, is uh, moving towards uh, uh, his ultimate uh, of this life. But if we, if we can prevent at this stage or at this stage, then survival is there. But at this stage, survival is very difficult and that is how the things are to work. So we have to see, number one, nothing happens, person remains healthy, or if it is taken up, we should take a precautionary measure that doesn't spread and uh, our alveoli remains quite uh, healthy. I mean, not fully healthy, but uh, we, should, we have to protect the damage which is caused by the virus in the sphere cases. And this is, uh, we have a clinical presentation of COVID-19, asymptomatic infection, uh, because now almost all of us might have uh, come across the virus but uh, some of us may be asymptomatic, absence of clinical signs, symptoms of disease, and normal chest X-ray or CT scan as a positive test for SARS-CoV-2. The mild infection, upper airway symptoms such as fever, fatigue, myalgia, cough, sore, throat, runny nose, sneezing, pulmonary clinical examination, normal. Some cases may have fever and others may experience gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. When uh, it moves to the moderate infection, clinical signs of pneumonia occur, persistent fever, initially dry cough, which becomes productive, may have wheezing or crackles, pulmonary aspiration, but shows no respiratory distance. Some individuals may not have symptoms or clinical signs, but chest scans reveal typical pulmonary layers. Severe infection, initial respiratory symptoms may be associated with gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea. The clinical deterioration usually occurs in a week with the development of dyspnea, hypoxemia, that's a blood oxygen saturation. And uh, then clinical infection, patients can quickly deteriorate to acute respiratory syndrome or respiratory failure and may present a shock encephalopathy, myocardial injury, heart failure, coagulatopathy, acute kidney injury, and multiple organ dysfunction, and ultimately uh, the end comes. Now, what is the current international status of COVID-19? Uh, countries, uh, the countries' case distribution. Now, distribution cases in India is a, now it's not today, it's a one, uh, uh, one, this is 11 lakh 55,000. Now it's not 11 lakh 90,000, it's a 55,000 uh, as per the 11 o'clock news. And 7.63% uh, of the world uh, population we have. Now in Brazil, uh, this is uh, 14.32, Russia 5.30, and uh, then other countries like that. But USA, 26.60% of the total cases of the world are in USA, that's number one, and the Brazil, number two, India, like number three, and Russia, like you can see these one, and then other countries, this one. Now, five top, uh, five infected countries with a case data along with China. And you see that uh, the uh, in USA, how many active cases are there? And uh, then we have recovered cases, diseased cases are, are there. So you see that, and then, uh, in the case, you see that in uh, India, uh, actually the death rate is very low. In China, they are not reporting that one. And even South Africa, uh, we, we, they are not reporting the how many deaths are occurring. And Russia is also doing. But we know that in America, the disease cases are much more than uh, even Brazil or in India. And the country spectrum of COVID, you see that uh, yesterday, 11 point uh, at 11.59, the almost uh, all countries in the world are infected. You can just see small pockets where the uh, infection has gone, not gone. So that's why it's a global pandemic, what we see today. Now, now in India, as I told you, the ge geographical uh, demographic distribution among Indian population, the gender distribution COVID-19 for India, 24% are female, 
it's more in the males, the 76% male, the males the most infected risk gender in COVID-19 as compared with the female. As per PIV data, 76 for males were infected in total number of positive cases are coming female, that is 24%. The recovery rate in India is 62.61% at coming disease case rate, that is 2.45%, and actual cases 34.92%. Now, in India, the patients that we start recover more due to the lifestyle and food habit, and uh, which play a more important role for the incremental immunity or we can say foods and spices, you food act as an immunity booster. And that's how I told it two days back that we, are, we have gone back to Indian culture. It has revived, rather it's, it was a challenge and it's a challenge for world, but India has faced it because it's a very rich culture which we had. And moreover, our uh, immunity is very strong. Uh, if you see in the rural areas, how children take bath in the uh, dirty ponds where uh, even the, the buffaloes are also watching and they're doing, and they are very strong. The immunity is very strong. And that's why in India, the death rate is very low. And uh, because we, we take our food and spices in the booster, the world is recognized now. Uh, even my, I know my uh, children are there in America and they are getting these uh, kawas and see, and the rate of the kawa const constituents have increased 100 times in, the, in that country. And uh, in Indian population, but age distribution uh, is a very, uh, see, uh, this, uh, you see the 30% is in the, the 7% from the, up to 40 years. And uh, the 30%, 41 to 60 years. And, uh, 63% of 60 and above. And that is what uh, is a very uh, problematic. And then uh, for COVID confirmed cases in India, this is what happens that uh, we have from 60 to 70, uh, very uh, the people at 23.4 percent. So as the Indian population for disease cases due to COVID-19 uh, is uh, quite high. A more person age group of more than 60 years are diseased due to COVID-19. That is 63% as compared with the zero to 40 years of age group. The age group shows most infection rate and most infected cases are found to recover from COVID-19. Age are the most important factor during COVID-19 infection. The age group of first years having least infectivity rate is 3.7% only. And, uh, the age group 31 to 40 years are more susceptible for SARS infection than 23.4, succeeded by age group 21 to 30 years, only 20.9%. And uh, there's a different clans uh, in top four three states in India. We have a, you know, uh, there are different clans of these ones and they have different distribution uh, in the different populations. And this is how number of active recovered cases as on 21st July, and today we find the Maharashtra having maximum number of infections, second most infected states in India, Tamil Nadu, and third one is Delhi, and uh, this is uh, from the Ministry of Health and Human Welfare. And uh, you see, in India, uh, we were uh, worried that uh, not much uh, laboratory testing was done, but today we know that uh, more than 1.4 crore, 40 crore, the 40 lakh, one crore 40 lakh has been already done. And of that, only one lakh, uh, 11 lakh 68 have been found to be positive. And uh, the number of tests performed uh, is uh, this one. And then we have the number of positive cases. The total number of total testing, uh, number of testing were done till 21st July, that is today, are one lakh, uh, one crore 40,000 like that one, which 11 lakhs of cases of found positive, which contains symptomatic as well as asymptomatic. This is from ICMR New Delhi. And uh, there are different tests performed the detection SARS. That's a serology testing, and which is a rapid test based on antibody detection from sputum and nasopharyngeal swab, larva, and uh, post-exposure SARS-CoV-2 
antigen test or antibody based detection of viruses it's a like elisa test and then molecular testing with replicate uh, turn from blood serum and, and uh, saliva also current infection co2 it's uh, the uh, what we reverse uh, this uh, pcr is done over there and uh, dna sequence done by hybrid method and it's a very uh, it's a cumbersome whereas now this test a very simple and for this one now there are since we don't have any proved drug that there are certain therapeutic options which were taken and some have, uh, people have succeeded in doing that one this is remdesivir is allowed to treat severe covid-19 patient adult and children both in us fda to the polyvirase a chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine it's again a very tricky one because those who are already have a heart problem they are not supposed to take this one because uh, there may be some uh, problem in the heart beat over here and uh, many countries are still using it and uh, interferon alpha 1 in a cup particular routine cord say is not suggested it can use in lower moderate doses in a short period of time now conversion plasma therapy which is uh, uh, becoming very popular in this country and uh, we know that in chandigarh also uh, quite a number of uh, patients have been treated by conversion plasma therapy uh, but uh, it is not a proved one because it, there's there may be some complications by plasma therapy that the plasma may be containing some other uh, materials which we have not unless we purify that from the cancer that chemostat misalate a drug for pancreatitis inhibits protein involved in viral binding then maxatisazone which is considered quite uh, uh, favorable by who the initial trial trial results from the united states dexamethasone a corticosteroid can be a life saving uh, then lipidovir or retrovir combination with ribavirin used in initial therapy of sars a patient whereas in the case of covid 19 patient no benefit and natural outcomes has been observed this is now the, and then uh, uh, people are trying to use a monoclonal body uh, by choosing by different effect or trying proteolysis and packaging all those things are being uh, done for by using these drug or to find a way i'm not sure but a very important thing which uh, uh, the our uh, host talked about the vaccines yes there are about 160 vaccines being tried world over and of these 23 are in a quite uh, uh, successful stage and we don't we don't know which one will come first but definitely uh, india is also playing a major role in that one now but the complications which we are talking about is that traditional vaccine development takes multiple years where we have a clinical phase one so first you pre clinical developing uh, de selecting the molecule then uh, doing your experiment on the rats and then the monkeys and then subjecting the based on the success rate subjecting to a human trial phase 1 uh, which has about 32 33% failure rate then phase 2 which might have a 70 plus failure rate and then they are passed on to phase 3 wherein the failure rate is not much and then it is sent for the success licensure which takes 2 to 3 years and maybe more but since the very uh, we are in emergency situation the pandemic uh, vaccine development model is a overlapping phases uh, because the one phase one is going on they start a phase two parallel or phase three like that one so define target product profile pre clinical development assay development they are all done parallel that is why uh, within 3 4 months the uh, the oxford and other people meda this modern modern or even india is uh, quite successful in uh, produce, moving to the phase 2 and phase 3 for that one and them licensure and this is what we call hybrid model adding new controlled human infection model for its sporting data does not accept accelerate initial timeline so manufacturer starts to to challenge strain engage communities and infection web starts to to send when disease character better known rescue drug available and begin testing of vaccine model so we have moved from this one to these ones 
wherein uh, we can be uh, we can have vaccine uh, very soon and probably the way we are moving uh, at least uh, 16 as i told you are uh, 23 are at a higher level of which about six are uh, in the almost final stage as the news came yesterday that oxford one as a, as a quite a state and india is a partner to that one and similarly the back on this uh, indian Hyderabad one is also in a, a final stage. Now, the strategy, what we call that the receptor binding domain uh, has we altered, but there are different uh, procedures that the RNA vaccine, DNA vaccine, recombinant protein vaccine, uh, then uh, vector vaccine, inactivated vaccine, live attenuated vaccine. Now, we are in India, we are working the inactivated vaccine, and this is how the process goes on. That the uh, we have a, a GMP uh, good uh, process development, then uh, clinical trials, phase one, phase two, phase three, licensure, that goes to the uh, regulatory agencies and then regulatory agency get tested and then uh, it is given uh, along with the, uh, to the populations, uh, but that will take a little more time. So what is the, the what I talk about, the success uh, of the vaccine, Oxford, AstraZeneca, which is a part of Serum Institute of India is a part of that one, which is genetically modified adenovirus, non replicating viral vector containing SARS CoV 2 spike protein. It's a protein from the same uh, vac the virus, and the process this is a promising result. And Moderna is using mRNA 1273, um, mRNA injected into the cell, mimic the outer surface like proteins of SARS-CoV-2, and here the vaccine is a quite successful. Then uh, co-vaccine, Bharat Biotech Hyderabad, we are using inactivated strain of old SARS-CoV-2, Biotech, that's Hyderabad and ICMR, and also National Institute of Virology, Pune. And then Zydus Cadilla Healthcare Limited, again, plasma DNA-based uh, vaccine is being prepared over here. But till the vaccine comes, can we wait when we uh, can we put our population to all these things? No, we have to see, save ourselves. We have to save ourselves. When we save ourselves, we are saving, saving others also. Because if we don't exude the divided particles in our breathing uh, cough, then we are saving others also, besides saving ourselves. So we have to wear masks, wear gloves, wash our hands and keep distance. And that's what precaution we have to take till we have a vaccine. But this was just an overview of uh, the uh, coronavirus, and I've tried to give it data up till today on this one. But friends, as uh, Dr. Taksama was talking about the research, that definitely, how could we do this one? How could uh, India compete with others? Because we have a very strong brain. We have a very, very fertile brain in this country. And because India is a young country, we are innovators. As I told you in the beginning, in the last uh, two days back, that our science has been very strong. Our total culture is science-based. And we have been innovating. The innovate, our festivals, innovative. Our food habit, innovative. Our dress habit, innovative that how you can remain healthy. But we had forgotten those things and we have adopted a Western culture. And by adopting that, eating pizza and uh, whatnot, whatnot, and you know that pizza uh, contains maida and it gets, uh, or even the uh, meat, especially the beef, it, uh, it, it uh, gets stuck in the colon. It doesn't have much fiber and uh, it ferments over there produce a free radical, and those free radicals cause DNA breaks in the colon. And that is why in the meat eaters, the incidence of cancer is much more, but not in those uh, who are eating vegetables. Most of the cruciferi family, that's the gopi, sarso, et cetera, they have the free radical sequencers. And anything which produce free radical, supposedly we take something and uh, it produce free radical, is a toxin which can produce cancer, but the vegetables will, uh, they, 
uh, the free radical sequencer will eat those up and will not allow the, them to break the DNA. So this is a protection uh, in the vegetarians. In Punjab, we eat sarso ka saag and makki ki roti. You know what the purpose is? Because sarso is a brassica, is a very important uh, for absorbing metals. Because the, it grows in the roadside and we have a lot much uh, metals from the coal tar and all those things and to absorb them. So that, similarly, when we eat uh, the sarso, any metal oils which we have we taken in, they will get absorbed by sarso and uh, the fiber in the sarso will, uh, along with makki roti, will swell that one and our uh, intestine will be clean in the morning. So there'll be no constipation. So that's what our food was, or even we had been nature leveling. That is why uh, our all jitna bhi devi devta hai, sabke vahan janwar hai. Chai wo Ganesh ji hai, chota sa chua hai. Arre, itne mote Ganesh ji chua hai, pe kaise baat sakte hai? But nahi, they have shown the importance of rare. And I come to the, my very common example, the Lord Shiva ka pariva. Bhagwan Shiv ka pariva, pura ecosystem hai. Usme... Please sum up, sir. sir. Excuse me, sir. Please, please sum up, sir. Yeah, there, are, just, there are other yeah, resource I'm persons, sir. Anything. So what I'm saying, that we are innovators. We, our culture has been innovative. Let's we make innovation as a part of our research. We should do research which is full of innovation. And even we get a, all answered by, by my meeting that what animals are doing, what plants are doing, and we will mimic them and solve our problem. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. It was, I think, uh, about Corona. From A to Z, you have given everything. It was a full length paper, uh, whereas uh, your blessings uh, are required at this moment. So, sir, I think uh, what we have done during the uh, seven days, the students or the participants, the listeners, they are our real judge. Yes. To what extent we have been successful in our workshop, it is to be ultimately decided by the participants. So to know our about our workshop, we have selected four participants and in very short, uh, I will appeal to, the, to these participants that they should express their experiences in joining this workshop. The first name that I am going to call for this purpose is Mr. Rajiv Yadav. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, honorable dignitaries and co-participants, good afternoon to all of each. I'm Rajiv Yadav, one of the participants in this online multidisciplinary workshop being held virtually in Kenai. Uh, I'll start with uh, this, uh, my opinion or my experience with this workshop with the quotation of Alvin Toffler, uh, who is a futuristic writer and a very uh, renowned writer, author of a very uh, remarkable book called Power Shift, Knowledge, Wealth and Violence at the Age of 21st Century, in which he expresses that knowledge and learning are power tools through which countries will conquer others in 21st century. Under this perspective, to do research and to know various learning tools become clarion call of the present time. Here comes the importance of this workshop. It is subject of immense pleasure that I have been part of this highly academic, student-centric, and path breaking endeavor of Kenai by improving research caliber and digital learning approaches among participants. The greatest achievement, in my opinion, the greatest achievement of this workshop is, uh, is to generate knowledge, curiosity, and more learning, and the most 
noteworthy feature of this workshop is its is its a uh, resource persons who are very learned and who delivered their ideas and thoughts on various research approaches and tools with truly and scholarly yet simple and lucid manner from the day one to the last day the speakers such as professor and mp verma sir professor ranjana sahgal professor s k chaturvedi professor s k malhotra professor m s pandey professor b v singh professor sudhir pratap singh professor g s uh, dr g s meena dr uh, naresh kumar choudhary professor jaswant singh dr and dr deepak singh and dr uh, sri ajay tripathi covered all possible aspects of research and digital tools in various disciplinary mode and uh, uh, this is very remarkable in the sense that uh, this is well organized and uh, very uh, thought provoking uh, experience for me and uh, i would say this is wonderful experience and uh, at this juncture i would uh, convey my thanks and my gratitude to all the organizing team of kni for providing a such thought provoking platform to suffice our curiosity to share our ideas and making this workshop multidisciplinary in real sense and uh, it it would it will be very uh, unjustice uh, if i would not mention those uh, speakers from knit who remarkably presented their ideas and shared their experience on working ms word on excel and powerpoint presentation they are remarkably well uh, well factual and well uh, known uh, person and uh, this is my uh, humble request to kni and it's uh, it's uh, all organizing team especially uh, principal sir and uh, professor uh, vp singh sir uh, dr uh, ram narayan singh uh, sir and uh, avdesh kumar dube and other the pers other person who are directly or indirectly associated with this uh, workshop uh, that uh, in future as well you just uh, organize such kind of workshop and such kind of faculty development program as well uh, so that we can get uh, more knowledge about uh, other things so uh, this is uh, all about on my part thank you so much for uh, organizing such a wonderful workshop thank you so much sir thank you thank you rajiv uh, next participant who has been with us she has been very punctual and uh, regularly she has been responding to the questions and doing the assignments that has been given by the team it is uh, jyoti ratna jyoti you, you have to share your experiences regarding this workshop but uh, be in remember the time be in short in short share your experiences with the, about this workshop in kenai conducted by us duti can you hear me yes sir yes sir now i can hear yes sir yes so okay uh, very good afternoon my warm regards to all the eminent guests all the dignitaries and all the participants who are listening to me uh, this is jyoti ratna phd research scholar zoology department kenai ps first of all i want to uh, uh, give my sincere thanks to uh, dr arun singh sir mm -hmm. who has provided me this wonderful opportunity to express my views on this esteemed webinar uh, so me as a researcher uh, got immense benefit from this research workshop that is the webinar uh, there were so many guest lectures the resource persons who have given their lectures on the topic related to research uh starting from what a research is to how to find a conclusion of it they have explained everything in a well mannered and of in and in a perfect fashion every day in this webinar the session was divided into uh, two sessions the whole day was divided into two uh, two sessions one was the morning session in which every day we have getting two lectures uh, which was basically related to the research aspect and the second session that is the afternoon session it was a self practice session in morning session uh, what i have learned and i think uh, most of the participants have learned that is what is a research proposal what is a research design 
data collection, data presentation, data sampling, review of literature, data handling, research methodologies, data analysis, and much more. Uh, then second, in the afternoon session, uh, it was a self-practice session, and I must appreciate that uh, the, in, this, this is, uh, esteemed institute, KNIPSS, has uh, taken this in account. That is, it should be a self-practice session. And we were previously told to attend this session with, the, with, the, with having a laptop or a desktop so that we can practice by ourselves. Uh, so in, we have, in this session, we have learned how to create Google Forms, a bunch of new tools we have learned, like uh, MS Excel, so that is, uh, basically works as uh, an analytic, analytical tool. Uh, then how to create scenarios for a target value, how to create a scenario summary. Then how to depict data with the help of graphs and pie charts. Then ANOVA, that is uh, how to find out the standard deviation, the ANOVA tool and everything. In this, uh, the most importantly, we have learned the effective documentation, how we can present our research. Uh, in this, we have learned a specific tool that is Test Word and Test Excel, and how to write a bibliography or a references, uh, you know, in a particular fashion, which was required uh, for a research work. Then we have learned how to review the literature online through various resources, online resources, by accessing Indian and foreign journals, pieces, and everything. So this was a very beneficial one. Uh, so it was a wonderful, informative, interactive session and webinar, which gave us a wonderful opportunity to learn, to broaden up our minds. So at last, I just want to uh, thank, uh, and I want to say I am very privileged to be the part of this esteemed webinar. There are such great educators who have uh, provided us, who have equipped us with all the desired tools required for the research work. So, a special thank you to uh, ICT Department of KNIPSS who have worked all the time, who have worked, who have uh, guided us in doing whatever tools we were, uh, you know, using. So, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for providing this opportunity. Thank you, Ratna. Thank you. The next participant who has been interacting with us is Avantika. Avantika, please share your experiences in this workshop with KNI. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Avantika Mishra, uh, PhD scholar. Uh, from KNI PSS, Department of Commerce. As we all know, today is the last day of our wonderful experience who started from the 15th July 2020. So I want to share my experience with you on this workshop. It has been a honor for us to have this workshop. I'm very uh, thankful all teachers, guides for giving us the precious time for, and for teaching us so many important things which will be helpful for our career and growth. And all the seven days were full of uh, energy and knowledgeable. So, um, and then now I'm going to over all the days. This workshop is very uh, useful for us. There are many new things I learned from this workshop. I'm very thankful to all teachers, coordinators, colleagues, and participants to giving us the uh, wonderful opportunity and providing the lots of knowledge uh, through the online workshop. It is very important in the pandemic situation. Uh, at home to online mm, media. Mm. So, uh, it's a very challenging situation all our India, uh, all over the world. But still, our college and professor work from home by sharing their knowledge with us. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, all teachers and teach, um, guiders. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, and thank you, Antika. Thank you. The last um, participant is. Kumari Anita Yadav. Anita, can you hear us? Anita, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, share your experiences about Thank this you. workshop in very short words. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I am a student of Professor Sandeep Kumar Malhotra and research scholar of University of Allahabad. Sir, I am very thankful to Dr. Ram Narayan, sir, Dr. Audhesh Dubey, sir, and Dr. Indu, ma'am, 
who joined me in this webinar this webinar is very useful for me i learn very uh, research methodology many tools like google docs uh, how to convert ppt in video form it's a try it is very useful for me and many lectures like my guide professor sandeep kumar malhotra stream culture honey bee venom and the lecture of professor ranjana sahagal ma'am is very useful for me and today lecture of professor sopti sir i saw sir describe the rules of clinical trials of vaccine this is very important term because every man in india is very confused how uh, our government how our scientist uh, is very mm, uh confusing uh, how they develop vaccine uh, very much in a uh, low time uh, professor sopti sir described very thoroughly about corona uh, corona about vaccines and these all lectures are very useful thank you sir thank you thank you thank you anita thank you, thank you anita uh it's a matter of honor for all of us that professor sandeep kumar malhotra sir is present with us sir uh, as a blessing we would like to have a few words from you sir professor malhotra sir am i audible yes sir yes sir sir your blessing sir for the these participants your lecture has been uh, so much interesting and <laughs> so useful for the students that they appealed me that a few words as blessing uh, sir ko zarur bulayega to humne kaha nahi zarur bula lenge sir us bachcho ko kuch aashirwad de dijiye sir are bhai i am i am humbled uh, doc sir i am really pleased to note that uh, at uh, such kind of an institute which is bubbling with energy and uh, within the short precincts not much of facilities and nobody knows outside how large is the institute but you are such a large hearted people this group of people can do wonders because what i saw was Thank a very sir. coherent and i mean it because the people who were studying they expected that things should be delivered in a manner that they could digest not only mug up in fact they were being told such large amount of huge amount of literature and statistics i myself heard some of those lectures but i was really uh, honored when uh, dr dube last evening went on to explain things in a personal note so that things do work out because computer is not everybody's job and uh, professor ramnayan was instrumental in approaching those gentlemen who were teaching those things in the classroom children were understanding but things concepts which were not clear they followed it up in the evening that was fantastic and this kind of a workshop approach i believe it is going to do wonders because nobody bothers about what students are gathering take home thing is that our approach should be that extension is to be in that manner that it is fruitful to the society unless it is application oriented nobody would care for whatever kind of webinars or symposia or workshops we do really when i heard that they are going to organize a workshop i was wondering what kind of aspect they will take up that teach that students would be able to do it hands on training and this was fantastic approach i believe that would go a long way for uh, these students to inculcate the spirit that these teachers bothered for us and under the conditions when corona had gripped us i was uh, listening to professor sopti's lecture uh, this afternoon and this uh, variety of things he told the kind of daily routine manners which are affected by uh, this organism they are really disturbing us and human beings do ask whether we will get rid of these things ever there are 2.2 billion of people who are dependent on pure drinking water and 4.2 billion people they do not have safe 
under these circumstances we are saying that wash every 20 minutes 30 minutes or whenever you go out and for 20 seconds you wash your hands now what, what amount of water we are wasting and where is water conservation these are the multiple multiplied things that follow after um, uh, pandemic in the post covid stage a day come when we will have to focus that not only utilize resources conserve resources my mention is also to the river ganges there is a lot of pollution there was a lot of pollution but now when we go out there is absolutely nothing and we know things will not sustain for long this will definitely come back when our industries start running is our effluents into those we will pour in all those things again so is there an idea i discussed it rajin singh sahab was the waterman of india and i did mention my concerns that we after kanpur we should have a separate channel for those industries who want to pour in their industrial wastes so that and he was very candid to discuss that even those things that are waste in trees they are good for cane culture that that water can still be used for irrigation purposes and other stream suppose we have a separate channel that starts from haridwar and continues till uh, bay of bengal and that that will be for the common man for kumbh mela and other pure water approaches so i think this kind of workshop has opened up quite a lot of avenues when i could feel that this is what the children must be taking back home compliments to all the speakers including the leader of the team uh, professor ramnayan and vijay pratap singh and um, of course your vice chancellor sir we could not have a glimpse of it uh, things will improve later on when we hear what kind of things are going down and professor yashwant singh we have been hearing these people at several different platforms and i am really impressed the kind of uh, uh, orators like uh, professor sopti you have gathered and he was kind enough to oblige us with a few words two days ago as well so that establishes the supremacy of academics in your institution my best wishes thank you so much thank you so much sir thank you sir whatever we have done in this seven days i think a uh, workshop report should be presented by us our entire team has been very much involved that and everyone has attempted that uh, we should try the best not less than this so uh, workshop report has to be presented and i am calling my organizing secretary dr ramnayan singh to present the workshop report in very short dr ramnayan singh thank you sir good afternoon all the dignitaries and participants i am here with a short uh, documentation of the seven day workshop activities that this multidisciplinary online workshop started on 15th july on zoom platform to engage the research scholars in active learning through regular lectures and practice sessions under the convenership of dr vp singh associate professor and head english department on stimulation of honorable principal dr radhesh yam ji sir our institution is known for quality teaching learning and research a reputation which we cherish and try to maintain at any cost in these difficult times we have continued teaching and learning to online platforms when it comes to say yaar yaar sopti utke chale gaye main lene so should i continue sir campuses remain closed due to covid 19 research is another strong area of the institute we have over 25 faculty members recognized as phd supervisors sir and we are currently running four pre phd course programs in the institute sir <clears throat> research students have been hit badly due to lockdown and closure of campuses as they could not do field visits could not go to library and labs neither they could see their supervisors pre phd courses students who actually attend classes like pg students are the most nervous students to address their needs and help them in learning about research processes and research tools we organize this 
online workshop on the theme, research approaches and digital learning tools. The online workshop was inaugurated at 10 a.m. on 15 July with keynote address of Professor Harikesh Singh, former vice chancellor of JP University, Chhapra Bihar. Professor Singh, in his talk, deliberated extensively on the theme of the workshop, covering aspects like importance, purpose, dimensions, and quality of research. Novelty, originality, contextual relevance, methodological viability, and conclusiveness it described as defining features of quality research. This lecture of the inaugural session was delivered by Professor Sandeep Kumar Malhotra sir on research to facilitate outreach efforts. In which he talked about genome extraction technology from honeybee, integrated plant farming, and coronavirus facts. In the afternoon session, creation of Google Form for online survey work was demonstrated to participants by Dr. Odesh Dubey as a digital tool of research. For every day of workshop from 15th to 21st, we had two lectures of external resource persons in the morning session and training of at least one digital tool or software in the afternoon session. Our morning session timing was from 10.30 to 12.30 and afternoon session lasted from 1.30 to 3.30, but every day sir, we exceeded this time limit due to absorbing lectures and participants' interests. We invited eminent academicians and experts as resource person of the workshop. They came from top Indian universities, uh, including JNU, BHU, Allahabad University, Lucknow University, Ramanur Loya University, MIT Jaipur, Chaudhary Radhavils University, Haryana, and Gramoday University, Chitrapur. And two resource persons we roped in from abroad, one from USA and other from Nigeria. Our resource persons not only delivered such valuable talks, but satisfied to reach our participants in the question answer session, which we planned after every lecture. On second day, Professor Rendana Sahagal from Indore School of Social Work, Indore, and Professor N.M.P. Verma, former Vice Chancellor, BBA University, Lucknow delivered lectures. Professor Sahagal discussed in detail about how to formulate good research proposal. In the afternoon session, Mr. Ajat described the features of MS Office as handy tools for research purposes. Morning session of day three is started with lecture of Professor S.K. Sinha, Dean Faculty of Commerce and Management, who spoke at length on data collection, presentation, and summarization. Second lecture was delivered by Dr. G.S. Meena from Center of Indian Languages, JNU, who discussed about offline versus online teaching aspects, online teaching learning resources, and also the status and direction of research in Hindi language. In the afternoon session, Professor S.K. Chaturvedi from Department of Biological Sciences, Gramode University, Chitrakoot, gave a presentation on GIS as digital tool of life sciences research. On day four, the morning session started with the lecture of Professor M.S. Pandey from English Department, VHU, on need and approach of cultural studies, which probably the dignitaries of the validatory session also enjoyed. A brief address of Padmasri Professor R.C. Sophie, sir, he attended before the next lecture on a statistical method by Professor Bhupendra Bikram Singh from Department of Economics, BH2, was delivered. In the afternoon session, Professor Arvind Kumar Singh from Zoology Department, BH2, beautifully described the use of ANOVA as an important tool for data analysis. On day five in the morning session, Professor Naresh Chaudhary from Physics and Electronics Department of Ramanur Loya University, Ayodhya, took an exhaustive lecture on MS Excel and demonstrated simple as well as advanced features in a slow, clear, and elegant way to our participants. Engineer Ajay Tripathi, Group General Manager at BWC Group of Companies in Nigeria, gave a presentation on effective documentation and bibliography management tools. Mr. Asish Srivastava described the features of MS Access useful in research work. Morning session of sixth day, sir, was addressed by two librarians to give tips about accessing library resources for furthering research. Dr. Deep Singh, librarian in IP Jaipur, Rajasthan, gave a list of various online resources of information in his lecture. And Dr. Pravish Prakash, assistant librarian, Lucknow University, Lucknow, provided very useful tips about online searching of desired information. They provided to participants very useful information about platforms like Sodhanga, Sodhgangotri, Swayam, NDL, open access sites, 
for books and journals. In the afternoon session, Professor Sudhir Pratap Singh from Center of Indian Languages, GNU, delivered a lecture on research approaches in Hindi language. It was followed by demonstration of preparation of PowerPoint and its conversion into video lecture by Mr. Vivek Srivastava. On seventh day, in the morning session itself, today on 21st, Dr. Vijeta Singh from Pennsylvania, USA, delivered a lecture on guidelines of publishing research in professional journals. Professor Jaswan Singh from Ramanur Loya University, Ayodhya, a renowned environmentalist and a researcher, a team member of Antarctica Expeditions, delivered a lecture on environmental issues and acquainted the participants with conditions of Antarctica and challenges of the Antarctica exploration. To keep our participants involved sir, actively in lectures and training sessions of digital tools, we circulated 15 objective questions based on the lectures and presentations of the day and sought answers same day from participants. Senior colleagues, Dr. Bihari Singh, Associate Professor in Education Department, Dr. Dinesh Tripathi from Geography Department, Dr. Sunil Pratap Singh from Physics Department, shouldered the responsibility with remarkable sincerity for framing questions regularly. We are obliged for their active support in smooth conduct, smoothly conducting assessment of participants on a regular basis. As organizing secretary, I am very thankful to my colleagues, Dr. Praveen Singh, Associate Professor, Physical Education Department, and Dr. Pratima Singh, Associate Professor, Hindi Department, who prepared a daily news of workshop in a time-bound professional manner, and we could see the daily coverage of our workshop activities in the prominent Hindi dailies. Through their cooperation, we found coverage of our workshop daily in the newspapers like Dani Jagran, Amar Ujala, Hindustan, Sopindra Bharat, etc. Our information technology staff members, Mr. Rajat, Mr. Ashish Srivastava, Mr. Vivek, Mr. Basan, Mr. Sanjay Pandey, Mr. Deep Bernwal, every supported us in smoothly running this workshop. Dr. Audhis, as our technical head of the workshop, coordinated with our technical cell, managed technical issues of this online workshop. Young staff members of IT cell through their presentation and digital tools contributed significantly in making the workshop a success. But all this would have not been possible without the blessings of our honorable principal sir, who stayed with us daily during both sessions of the seven days online workshop. He guided and helped us not just as a principal, but as an elder member of the organizing team. He provided objective questions when we needed. He edited the news for circulation to media and extended help in all sorts we needed. Thank you very much, sir, for your generosity, which led us to smoothly concluding the workshop without compromising standards and quality. I also thank to my senior faculty members, Honorable Vice Principal Dr. S.K. Singh, Chief Dr. Dr. K.D. Singh, Dr. J.S. Sukla, Dr. Indu Singh, who provided support and help in various ways in organizing this workshop. At the end, I would like to thank the dynamic convener of workshop, Dr. V.P. Singh, Associate Professor and Head at English Department, who led from the front and enabled us to successfully organize the seven-day online workshop. Working with you, sir, has been a wonderful experience. Thank you for trusting me to work as a secretary of the workshop. That's all, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for giving, for listening to the report of this seven-day workshop. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Aryan Singh. Thank you. Our chief guest now is with us. Uh, I should introduce my chief guest, Professor Ram Lakhan Singh. He has been our like our elder brother, always affectionate and loving to all of us when he was here in this university. Uh, his, he has been a professor in the Department of Biochemistry. Dr. Singh, Professor Singh has been a very studious person and very humble and very generous person. I have found him always. Always a supportive man, a scholar plus his simplicity. Both have impressed me very much. At present, Professor Aryan Singh is the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Nilambar Pitambar University at Jharkhand. It's an honor for me to find him as a chief guest in this valedictory session. Sir, I would like to have a few words of blessings 
far from you and you always have been quite helpful for us so your blessings on this on the successful end of this uh, seven day workshop i think it will be very useful for all our participants and for me also so without for any further delay i am inviting professor ramlakhan singh sir to address the participants uh, and all the in this valedictory session professor aryal singh sir hello can you hear me hello hello ji sir we can we can listen you uh, a very good afternoon good afternoon sir uh, honorable uh, chairman uh, dr yashwant yes, singh uh, learned scientist professor sobati uh, dr vp singh sahab dr bihari singh dr audhesh dube dr ram nayan singh ji principal dr radhe syam singh dr susil singh uh, uh, participants ladies and gentlemen first of all i apologize that i could not join in the very beginning of this valedictory session due to some preoccupation with my chancellor's office actually so we were just busy in some video conferencing over there that is why i couldn't join right at that time so i am very happy to learn that uh, this workshop is going to end very very wellfully and with the blessings and wonderful lecture actually i joined in between when professor sobati was speaking and i and i could listen uh, part of the lecture it has been a wonderful lecture uh, i missed it actually so with this uh, uh, you know wonderful lecture by professor sobati and uh, perhaps right now i am seeing that some 91 participants are there so if the these many number of participants are there in the very dicty session i can really imagine or anybody can imagine the grand success of this uh, 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 workshop which was uh, you know from 15th to uh, today the 21st in fact the research approaches and digital learning tools they are wonderful there are wonderful tools actually and in the uh, at this time when covid 19 is there and it is throughout the uh, uh, world in fact so the digital learning is the only learning in fact which we can apply which we can use uh, the students the teachers uh, the uh, everybody you know they are at the same footage uh, 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 as far as the learning uh, of the subject or anything is concerned i have learned a lot of things actually during this covid when i had to take the online lectures because previously i was not uh, really uh, uh, very uh, uh, you know fond of taking lecture online but during this covid i started taking lectures online and obviously i i used to enjoy that lecture and n number of tools we have learned out of this and in fact uh, we in india do not have as many platforms as you, as we should have even one should one should have you know we should have at least one digital platform which can be used across the uh, you know Uh, scientists the researchers the uh, social scientists and everybody and that is very very uh, you know uh, acutely needed as far as various platforms are concerned you know we are we have been using the zoom we are using webex uh, the google meet etc etc now with the time we could know that there are people around the globe who are really uh, you know Uh, 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 somehow uh, uh, taking our data for their own use so uh, day by day when we are uh, going to learn all these things we are really squeezing our uh, acquaintances are squeezing the number of platforms through which we can communicate so it is immensely needed that we should the india should develop a proper 
platform, digital platform on which we can really, uh, you know, communicate with each other. Perhaps this uh, 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 COVID-19 has also uh, tried to make us learn that how in the social distancing, it is not actually social distancing, it is the physical distancing. So in the time of COVID, physical distancing and so many other measures are there which one has to take care of. And, uh, you know, uh, Along with these uh, 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 precautions and measures, we can perhaps uh, 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 function wellfully, function very properly. And that is the challenge which we have accepted. And uh, I think we are doing it very well. So once again, uh, you know, uh, I will thank the organizers, especially Dr. B.P. Uh, Singh Sahab to invite me to be with you all. Again, I will apologize that I couldn't give that much of time, but maybe next time when we will be there uh, on such platforms, I will be devoting much time perhaps, and it will be pleasure. It is always a pleasure to be with you all. KNI uh, persons, uh, they have been my friend, they have been my old friend. Every person in the KNI, because it has come, uh, it, it used to come in the uh, purview of the uh, Dr. Ram Manohar Lohiyawad University. So we very, very often work together. We enjoy working, you know, uh, in the group actually. And it has been a wonderful support given by the KNIPSS to the University of Dr. Ram Manohar Lohiyawad University. So again, I thank you and uh, I congratulate you all for this grand success of this workshop. Thank you. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for sparing time and also addressing us. You have always been an encouragement for me and also for other students. So I'm very much thankful to you. Uh, now, for the presidential address, um, I am inviting uh, Professor Yashwan Singh, sir, who is presiding this session, who has been uh, ex-principal of this institute, and so many things uh, he has done, which is memorable for the institute, giving a proper structure, giving a pro proper system, and mentoring us all. These are his contributions, which we can never forget. And still, he is a very uh, sharp, intelligent, and hilarious person. To talk with him is always uh, quite uh, inspiring. So for the presidential address, I am inviting Professor Yashwan Singh, sir, for his blessings to us and also to the participants. Dr. Yashwan Singh, sir. Dr. Radesh Yam Singh, Principal Kerai, Dr. B.P. Singh Sahar, Dr. Aryan Singh Sahar, Professor R.C. Surti, especially Professor Dr. Ram Lakhan Singh, बहुत दिनों बाद देखा वाइस चांसलर आप हो गए मुबारक बात तो दिया था लेकिन देख के अच्छा नहीं लगा वो जवानी दिखाई नहीं पड़ी बुढ़े लग रहे थोड़ा मेंटेन कीजिए कह रहे थे कि ऑनलाइन आने का एक कस्टम में नहीं था अरे ऑनलाइन एक महीने दो महीने पहले आए हो इसके पहले कैसे आप ऑनलाइन होते फिलहाल हम लाइन पे हैं आप ये तय है एक बार फिर मेरा मुबारकबाद स्वीकार करें बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपको और एक हफ्ते से मैं भी लगातार तो ये नहीं करता कि सुन रहा हूं दो तीन लोगों को मैंने सुना और जो कुछ मैंने सुना जो कुछ मैंने समझा जो कुछ मैंने जाना उसमें मैं ये कह सकता हूं शॉर्टली स्पीकिंग कि सिस्टमेटिक थियोरिकल एनालिसिस टू द फील्ड ऑफ स्टडीज मेथोलॉजी a systematic analysis of methods and principles associated to the bench of knowledge. This is the theme. Yadiv Ki, Abhi Surti Sahab ne do tin din pahle kuch bharat ki sanskrit ki baat uthai thi. Mai wahi sunne ke liye bada bhikrat tha. Aur chahta tha ki mai unko aaj jaroor sunu. Lekin aaj unho ne mujhe niraas kiya logon ko unho ne bhalhe utsahit kiya ho. 
चूंकि मैं उससे कुछ और जानना चाहता था ये तो जनरल बातें आती जाती रहती है देखिए डॉक्टर साहब ये रिसर्च की विधा हमारे देश की बड़ी पुरानी वैदिक काल से ही है याद होगा शिकांगो में जब स्वामी विवेकानंद बोल रहे थे तो उन्होंने कहा था कि वेद आदि और अनंत है लोगों ने पूछा कैसे उन्होंने कहा कि वैदिक प्रिंसिपल यूनिवर्स में तब भी पहले जब लोग नहीं जानते थे आज लोग जानने लगे तो भी है कल लोग भूल जाएंगे तो भी रहेगा क्योंकि वेद किसी वेद विशेष के द्वारा समय विशेष पर लिखी गई पुस्तक नहीं है भिन्न भिन्न समय में भिन्न भिन्न व्यक्तियों के द्वारा जिन्हें ऋषि मुनि महर्षि कहते रह गए कहते रहे संचित किया गया ज्ञान का कोष है उन्होंने अपनी रिजिबिलिटी के द्वारा अपनी रिजिबिलिटी के द्वारा उस यूनिवर्सल प्रिंसिपल को ग्रेस किया जैसे न्यूटन ने बताया था लॉ ऑफ ग्रेविटी ये विधा बड़ी पुरानी है हमारे यहाँ आपने रामायण पढ़ा होगा रामचरित मानस पढ़ा होगा न पढ़ा होगा तो दूरदर्शन पे देखा होगा कि अगस्त मुनि तमाम तरह के आयुध देते हैं राम को संशोधित आयुध जो रावण और मेघनाथ के पास जो उपलब्ध आयुध थे उससे भारी पड़ जाते हैं आप महाभारत पीरियड में देखते तो गुरुकुल हुआ करते थे द्रोणाचार्य का गुरुकुल परशुराम का गुरुकुल वहां अस्त्रों शस्त्रों के संदर्भ में शोध ही नहीं संधान विधा भी बताई जाती थी और सबसे बड़ी बात ये योग क्या है कर्म क्या है ज्ञान क्या है भक्ति क्या है आत्मा की अजरता अमरता क्या है ऐसा नहीं है कि गीता में ही कहा गया है अगर आपने पढ़ा होगा तो इसके पहले कई शास्त्रों में इसका वर्णन है लेकिन सबको एक जगह एकत्रित करके सिस्टमेटिकली प्रस्तुत कर दिया अभ्यास में सबसे बड़ा शोध ग्रंथ है यही तो मिथन है यही तो मिथलॉजी है सिस्टमेटिक प्रेजेंटेशन सिस्टमेटिक प्रेजेंटेशन माने साइंस हर चीज का एक तरीका होता है हर विषय का अपना तरीका होता है हर विषय की अपनी विधि होती है हर विषय में किसी भी बात को प्रेजेंट करने का अपना एक मेथड होता है जिसके संदर्भ में तमाम विषय के लोगों ने बताया चर्चा किया अच्छा लगा भाई क्या है ये और बात है कि पुरानी बातें नहीं रह गई विधा बदल गई है अब भी पहले टाइटल तय करो पहले उन्होंने गीता टाइटल नहीं तय कर लिया था पहले टाइटल तय करो फिर कॉन्टेस्ट पे आओ फिर ऑब्जेक्ट को बताओ फिर हाइपोथिस पे आओ फ्रेमिंग आप स्कीम करो डेटा कलेक्शन करो क्या क्या करो कोई मेथड अपनाओ मेथड या मेथड या न्यू डायमेंशन या ये न्यू क्वालिटेटिव या क्वान्टिटेटिव टेक्निक अपना करके यानी कि किसी राहों की राह ही बन जाओ अपनी राह अलग तलाशो अपनी राह अलग तलाशो यही तो है मेथड इसके अलावा क्या हो सकता है ये और बात है मैं लाख आदमी हूँ प्रोफेसर उपलब्ध बच्ची एक समय बोल रहे थे उन्होंने कहा दिस इज ए टाइम टू डेवलप करप्शनल जो स्टूडेंट क्या कुछ इस तरह की बातें नहीं हो रही क्या जिस मिथड की बात हो रही है जिस मिथलॉजी की बात हो रही है रेसनलिटी होनी चाहिए रेजनलिटी होनी चाहिए लॉजिक होना चाहिए क्या क्या दुनिया भर की क्या क्या होना चाहिए लेकिन जो वो जो हो रहा है वो नहीं होना चाहिए वो हो रहा है और क्या क्या हो रहा है ये आप सभी जानते हैं डॉक्टर रामनयन सिंह से निवेदन करूंगा इस पर भी कोई वेबिनार जरूर कराइएगा इसमें इम्प्रूवमेंट के बारे में बात कीजिए और यही एक कारण है कि हमारे इस देश में तमाम रिसर्च हो रहे हैं हर कोई डॉक्टर राम लखन सिंह नहीं है उसमें वो रिजल्ट दिखाई पड़ेगी उसी यूनिवर्सिटी में कुछ और है नाम नहीं लूंगा कहना भी नहीं चाहिए तो एक ओरिजिनलिटी नहीं है तमाम रिसर्च हो रहे हैं तमाम रिसर्चर हैं ये मौलिकता क्यों नहीं है कट एंड पेस्ट की थियोरी हमने अपना लिया है थोड़ा यहाँ से ले लिया थोड़ा वहां से ले लिया एक कुंड में जोड़ते चले गए और सबसे बड़ी बात ये अभी मैं पढ़ रहा था नासा का एक स्टेटमेंट इस देश की सबसे पुरानी पूरे दुनिया की सबसे पुरानी भाषा संस्कृत है सबसे संपन्न भाषा संस्कृत है कंप्यूटर के लिए सबसे अप्रोप्रिएट भाषा संस्कृत है ज्ञान की श्रेष्ठ भाषा संस्कृत है और हमारे यहाँ कोई आया था बता के चला गया हिंदुस्तान में कोई ऐसी भाषा नहीं जिसमें ज्ञान परोसा जा सके एक विदेशी भाषा हमारे ऊपर लादी गई 
जितने भी रिसर्च वर्क हो रहे हैं जितने भी संबंधित किताबें हैं वो सब प्राय इंग्लिश में है आधी एनर्जी आधा समय तो लोग उसको समझने में बिता देते हैं जो पैराग्राफ समझ में नहीं आता वैसा का वैसा ही उतार देते हैं दूसरी दूसरी मीनिंग उसका गाइड समझता है तो स्टूडेंट समझता है और अगर हम लोग जैसे थियरी ऑफ पनिशमेंट है हमारे यहाँ डॉक्टर यशकर सिंह पढ़ाते थे थियरी ऑफ पनिशमेंट वो आप आस्टिन को पढ़ा कीजिए एक बार मैंने महाभारत में शांति पर को पढ़ा कभी पर पढ़ करके देखिएगा उस थियरी ऑफ पनिशमेंट जो उन्होंने कह दिया आस्टिन कहीं सेंड नहीं करता कह दिया आस्टिन ने कि किंग कैंड ढूंढ और आग उनसे बहुत पहले तुलसी ने कहा था कि समरथ के नहीं दोष घुसाए तो अगर इन थियरीज को समझना होगा इस पर कुछ लिखना होगा तो तुलसी को हमें समझाना होगा आस्तिन को हम समझ नहीं पाएंगे हमको समझना होगा तो आ, हमारे जो अपने ग्रंथ हैं हमारी जो अपने अपना अतीत है उस अतीत को समझने के लिए संस्कृत की जानकारी बेहद जरूरी है जिसको लोग नहीं जानते कोई भी रिसर्चर हो जानते उस माध्यम से है जो कुछ विद्वान अंग्रेजों ने उसका ट्रांसलेशन करके हमको बता दिया है इसलिए हमारी सब की सब दखल है हमारी मौलिकता नहीं दिखाई पड़ती सवाल ये है अभी डॉक्टर विजय प्रताप सिंह ने एक बात कहा कि ये जो थीसिस है ना ये जो शोध वर्क है ना ये विकास से जुड़ा होना चाहिए यही अफसोस है डॉक्टर विजय बहुत जरूरी है विकास बड़ा जरूरी है लेकिन विकास विस्तार और विनाश क्या इन तीनों से जुड़ा हुआ शोध नहीं है क्या शांति सुरक्षा और स्वास्थ्य से जुड़ा हुआ शोध इसी स्तर का हुआ है अगर शांति स्वास्थ्य और सुरक्षा से जुड़ा हुआ शोध भी उसी स्तर का हुआ होता जो विकास विस्तार और विलास को लेकर के हुआ है तो शायद कोविड नाइन्टीन का इलाज आज तक मिल गया होता बड़ा लोग कह रहे हैं कि ये मैथलाजी ये रिसर्च वो रिसर्च एक इनविजुअल वेक्टेरिया ने महामारी फैलाई है कहते हैं कि दस बीस बार हाथ धो लो ठीक रहोगे यहाँ हाथ धोकर एक महामारी पूरे मानवता के पीछे पड़ गई है बड़े बड़े रिसर्चर हाथ उठा लिए ये क्यों हो रहा है इसलिए हो रहा है हमने मेडिकल साइंस में उस तरह का कोई रिसर्च किया ही नहीं हम तो विनाश के अस्त्र शस्त्र तैयार करते रहे हम तमाम विकास के संदर्भ में इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन के संदर्भ में जुड़े रहे खास आप विज्ञानिकों ने इस संदर्भ में सोचा रहा होता उसे निराश हताश होने की जरूरत नहीं है प्रयास प्रयत्न चल रहे हैं कहने के लिए हर देश कर रहा है कि हमने तैयार कर लिया हमने तैयार कर लिया लेकिन संख्या रोज बढ़ती जा रही है मरने वालों की संख्या बढ़ जा रही है फिर भी हम कहते हैं कि निराश हताश नहीं होना है प्रयास और प्रयत्न हमारा निरर्थक नहीं जाएगा कोई ना कोई कार्य लिहाज तो आएगा ही हाँ इतना जरूर है कि जो कुछ आपने एक हफ्ते किया उससे वैचारिक आदान प्रदान हुआ और ये वैचारिक आदान प्रदान होना ही चाहिए कि वैचारिक आदान प्रदान कुछ तो दे जाता है कम से कम जिन शिक्षकों ने सुना है उन शिक्षकों की टीचिंग इंप्रूव हो जाएगी एक क्वालिटी इन्हेंसमेंट उनमें होगा निसंदेह अगर गंभीरता से सुना है एक्सप्रेशन के फील्ड में भी उसकी फिल्टी होगी अगर नहीं कुछ हुआ तो और जो बच्चे हैं वो बच्चे भी बहुत कुछ देखेंगे जहाँ तक मैं समझता हूँ ठीक है हर विधा में कोई न कोई दोष तो होता ही है कुछ भी निर्दोष नहीं होता हमारा आपका फर्ज यही मैंने कई बार कहा है कि मक्खी एक होती है मधुमक्खी वो फूलों पे मडराती है मधुरस चुराती है मधु बनाती है स्वयं के लिए सेवित करती है स्वास्थ्य बढ़ाती है लोगों का ये एक गंदी चीजों पर बैठने वाली मक्खी होती है जो बीमारी बीमारी फैलाती है हमको मधुमक्खी बनना है अच्छे लोगों को तलाशना है जो अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं जो दिख रहा है लग रहा है उनका अनुसरण अनुसरण करना है उनका उदाहरण देना है राम लखन सिंह जैसे लोग जब तक हैं तब तक मैं बड़ा आश्वस्त हूँ कि ऐसी कोई गड़बड़ी नहीं आएगी और फिर अंत में मैं डॉक्टर विजय प्रताप सिंह डॉक्टर राम नयन सिंह और राम नयन सिंह ने जितने नाम बताए टीचिंग नॉन टीचिंग सबको और विशेषतया डॉक्टर राधे श्याम सिंह को इसलिए कहा आप कट मरे खुश करें नाम तो राधे श्याम का ही होगा चूंकि प्रिंसिपल है और विशेष रूप से धन्यवाद देता हूं और श्री विनोद सिंह इस संस्थान के जो प्राचार्य हैं जिन्होंने लगातार कोशिश की है कि आज के इस विपरीत परिस्थिति में भी एडमिक एडवांस ईयर बना रहे आप कुछ न कुछ करते रहें 
और उस संदर्भ में आप कर रहे हैं उनको भी धन्यवाद देता हूँ और इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ मैं अपने वाणी को विराम देता हूँ धन्यवाद थैंक यू सर यही तो बात है कि आपका अंदाजे बया और है तो माय पार्टिसिपेंट्स आई थिंक यू हैव सीन दैट इन दिस सेशन द पैनलिस्ट दैट यू हैव लिसन यू कैन से दैट फॉर देम एज कैन नॉट बी दर देम एज इज जस्ट ओनली ए नंबर their experiences their academic activities even at this age it is still very much uh, fresh new novel and original so their blessings definitely would have been of great help for all of us now i think this is the time to invite my principal डॉक्टर राजेश श्याम सिंह सर और द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स डॉक्टर राजेश श्याम सिंह सर धन्यवाद डॉक्टर वीपी सिंह जी इस सप्तिवसीय कार्यशाला जो कि रिसर्च अप्रोचेज और डिजिटल लर्निंग टूल्स थीम पर आधारित थी सात दिन तक लगातार विचार और तकनीक का एक मैराथन दौड़ चलता रहा और ये सब संभव हुआ है आप सब बौद्धिक व्यक्तियों के साथ में जुड़ने से कोविड उन्नीस के इस काल में हम सब एक साथ एक मंच पर तो उपस्थित नहीं हो सके ये मजबूरियां थी लेकिन अंतर्जाल के एक टूल से एक प्रयास से हम सब एक साथ जुड़े समापन समारोह के माननीय अध्यक्ष बड़े भाई यशवंत सिंह जी जिन्होंने कि बराबर सातों दिन तक लगातार हर शाम उन्होंने सूचना लिया कि आज कौन कौन बोला यदि किसी एक आध व्यक्ति को सुनते थे तो उसके बारे में भी चर्चा करते थे हमारे साथ आरसी सोपती साहब जैसा व्यक्तित्व जो कि भारत ही नहीं विदेशों में भी जिनकी प्रतिष्ठा है जिनकी बौद्धिक प्रतिष्ठा है वो हम लोगों के साथ जुड़े और उनका आशीर्वाद उनका जो अपना बौद्धिक प्रवचन था वो हम सबको प्रभावित कर गया दरअसल उन्होंने शुरू में आज के तीन दिन पहले भारतीय संस्कृत पर एक बहुत छोटा सा व्याख्यान दिया और उन्होंने तमाम लोगों की प्यास बढ़ा दी थी भारतीय संस्कृत से संबंधित और चीजों को नए रूप में जानने और समझने के लिए एक छोटा सा उन्होंने संकेत दिया था कि कृष्ण को सबसे अच्छा पर्यावरण विद मानना चाहिए हम सब भी बाद में इस विषय पर सोचने लगे कि कृष्ण ने केवल नंद और यशोदा के उस मड़मे और कनक नंद के भवन को तो केवल बस एक हॉस्टल की तरह लिया बिल्कुल एक ऐसे प्लेस की तरह लिया जहां पर वो थक के आते थे सोते थे और सुबह ही उठ के फिर से गाय चराने चले जाते थे तो पर्यावरण नदी को साफ करना यमुना को साफ करना वो उनका पर्यावरण का सबसे अच्छा प्रयास था और तमाम ऐसे उन्होंने काम किए पर्यावरण के लिए ही पर्यावरण को जिसने भी क्षति पहुंचाने की कोशिश की उसको समाप्त करने में कृष्ण की भूमिका है बिल्कुल नए संकेत छोटे छोटे संकेत आप बौद्धिक व्यक्तियों से हम सब लोगों को और जो जुड़े हुए प्रतिभागी थे उन सबको मिले उसे तो मैं खास तौर पर सोपती साहब का धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ मैं प्रोफेसर संदीप मल्होत्रा साहब का लगातार मैंने देखा जब जब मैं जुड़ा के इस स्क्रीन पर तब तक मैंने तब तक तब तब मैंने मल्होत्रा साहब को बिल्कुल उपस्थित देखा और उपस्थित ही नहीं बिल्कुल गंभीरता से यदि कोई छोटा व्यक्तित्व भी बोल रहा होता था तकनीक के बारे में उसको भी वो सुनते थे इसलिए उनको विशेष रूप से धन्यवाद देना चाहूंगा हमारे बड़े भाई प्रोफेसर रामलखन सिंह जी जो हम सब के बड़े आत्मीय अग्रज रहे हैं कमला संस्थान के शुभ में उनका जो प्रयास रहा है कमल संस्थान को प्रतिष्ठा दिलाने में वो हम सबके लिए बिल्कुल एक पूंजी है जो उस पूंजी को संभाल के हम सब रखे हुए हैं अभी तो 20-40 किलोमीटर दूर थे थोड़ा और दूर चले गए हैं लेकिन इतनी भौतिक दूरी बड़ी है दिल की करीबी 
उतनी ही और घटती चली गई है वो उन सबके दिल के निहायत करीब व्यक्तित्व रहे हैं उनका भी एक आशीर्वाद इस समापन समारोह में हम सबको मिला इस कारण उनका भी धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करना चाहता हूँ धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करना चाहता हूँ नाइजीरिया से जुड़े हुए विद्वान का अमेरिका से जुड़े हुए विद्वानों का जो कि इस ऑस्ट्रेलिया से जुड़े हुए विद्वानों का जो कि इस कार्यशाला को निरंतर बौद्धिक समृद्धि प्रदान करते रहे मैं धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करना चाहता हूँ अपने समस्त आयोजन समिति का जिन्होंने बड़ी गंभीरता के साथ गंभीरता के साथ मैं इसलिए कह रहा हूँ कि इस दौर एक वेबिनार भी बिल्कुल कोरोना की तरह फैला वेबिनार भी हर विश्वविद्यालय में हर बिल्कुल उसी तरह फैला जैसे कि कोरोना बढ़ता चला गया अब जाके लोग थके हैं थोड़ा जब दो तीन महीने हो गए हैं अब अब जाके लोग थोड़ा थके हुए हैं लेकिन विदाउट सिस्टम बिना किसी बौद्धिक प्रायोजन के हम भी वेबिनार करवा रहे हैं इसके निमित्त लोगों ने वेबिनार करवाना शुरू किया था लेकिन हमारे संस्थान ने हमारे आयोजकों ने कभी भी सिस्टम को ब्रेक करने की कोशिश नहीं की तो एक बौद्धिक सिस्टम हमारा है हम उस सिस्टम के कभी भी हाशिए पर जाने की हमने कभी कोशिश नहीं की हमने बराबर केंद्रीयता को बनाकर रखा इस हेतु हमारी आयोजन समिति जो कार्यशाला से जुड़े हुए तकनीकी लोग हैं क्योंकि संस्थान का एक बहुत बड़ा कंप्यूटर सेंटर है लगभग संस्थान में अब साढ़े सोलह हजार विद्यार्थी हैं बहुत बड़ा कंप्यूटर सेंटर हमारा है जिसमें कि एक साथ कम से कम छह सौ लड़के बैठ के कंप्यूटर सीख लेते हैं तो उसके जो टीचर्स थे जो उसके एक्सपर्ट्स थे और उनकी जो आत्मीय संबंध थे और बाहर के उससे विचार और तकनीक का एक समन्वय करने में बड़ी मदद मिली उन सबका भी मैं धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करना चाहता हूँ आप सब ने आप सब बड़े व्यक्तित्व हैं अपने जीवन के बहुमूल्य क्षणों में से थोड़ा क्षण आप लोगों ने संस्थान को दिया बस मैं धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करना चाहता हूँ एक वादा जरूर आपसे चाहता हूँ कि संस्थान जब आपको याद करे ऐसे बहुत ही कार्यक्रम के लिए तो थोड़ा समय और अपना स्पेयर करने की आप कष्ट कीजिएगा आप सब कृपा कीजिएगा आप सबका एक बार पुनः धन्यवाद देता हूँ थैंक यू सर फॉर थैंकिंग अस माय डियर पार्टिसिपेंट्स एज यूजल आपको भी आज वो क्वेश्चंस जाएंगे जिनका कि आपको आंसर देना है टाइम से और आज ही आप लोगों को पीपीटी भी सबमिट करनी है वो पीपीटी आज अगर जो सबमिट नहीं कर सकते हैं आज कर देंगे तो और अच्छी बात है वो कल तक उनको टाइम रहेगा आपको लिंक भी नया भेजा जाएगा और थोड़ा सा टाइम दीजिए आप लोगों के कार्यों को हम लोग इवेल्युएट करेंगे सर्टिफिकेट के लिए कल से ही फोन कर तंग करना मत करिएगा एक हफ्ते के बाद सर्टिफिकेट खुद आपके ईमेल पर भेज दी जाएगी विद दीज वर्ड्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर बी पी सिंह आई एम वंस अगेन thanking you all sir for sparing time and also for enlightening us and our participants thank you very much sir i am sir namaskar sir thank you 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 s